Hey everybody, welcome to church today. So glad you are here. I brought my, my bride, Michelle, up here with me for just a moment because we want to let you know right now today might be your final opportunity if you are married or engaged to join us this Friday night for date night 2018. Oh, if you want a spicy, fun night, this is the night and there are only a few spots remaining. Don't take my word for it. We got proof here with us tonight. Uh, I want to draw your attention to this lovely couple right over here, Isaac and Carell Scott. But what you don't know is how they were doing just one year ago before date night 2017. We got a picture. This was every day fighting, fussing, going at each other. That's what their relationship looked like. And then they went to date night, and then the next day, this has been every day of their marriage ever since then. Check this out. Come on now. Look how Table. happy Isaac is. Table. Oh, my goodness. People, be careful what you put on social media. I can see it too, all right? <laughs> Baby, tell us about date night this week. Seriously, boys, did y'all see how happy Isaac looked? You too can be that happy, all right? Can I tell you though, but the time is limited. Today, out of the information desk and on our website is probably your last opportunity to register for date night. Now, listen to the words that are about to come out of my mouth. So churros is coming with a full fajita bar. Did you hear that? Fajitas. <laughs> we're not talking about just tacos. We're talking about a full fajita bar. Then we're going to have Ben Neiman come, and he's going to take pictures. He's bringing his light kit. And for all of you who sat at home last year after date night and watched social media, everybody's brand new profile pics, you know you don't want to be in that crew. You want to be at date night and get your new picture taken. And we've got this beautiful uh, Leah Garcia from Dust Made. It's going to come. Will y'all put that picture up? Look at her. Look, don't you just want to be her friend? Mm -hmm. Look at her. She's going to come with her pottery wheel, and she's going to do some amazing things. And then she's going to let us make a piece of pottery to keep. You get to keep it. So not <laughs> only... If you miss out on signing up, will you have to see everybody else's beautiful pictures go up, and you won't? have one. But then on the Sunday when they come back to pick up their beautiful piece of pottery that they made and they get to brag on, you won't have one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I only have 18 spots left. Do you hear what I'm saying? I only have 18 spots left. We also are providing child care. We're going to feed those kids and do a craft with them. But I don't know. Honestly, after watching Carell and Isaac's video, you might want to call the grandparents for this one. You might want an empty house when you go home. <laughs> Seriously. And listen, Brad and I are going to be there. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Honestly, get registered. Go find the balloons and the flowers out at the information desk, or you can go online to heritagelife.org backslash events. Don't miss it. $50 a couple. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, baby. That reminds me of the day she proposed to me. She was like, how can you say no to this? <laughs> oh, looking forward to this Friday night. Let's dive in today. Uh, I'm actually, we have, ever since the first Sunday in January, we have been following the Ten Commandments in this series called Crafted for His Glory. And today I'm actually going to uh, cover the, all of the remaining Commandments, and then next week's going to be like a big summary of what can we take away for this and live this out. But uh, the first four of the Ten Commandments covers our relationship with God, and then the, the final six addresses our relationship with each other. And uh, I want to cover all the remaining five with you today. Uh, and, and I'll go ahead and put the scripture up on the screen for you to read, and it's in your uh, message notes there. Exodus 20, 13 through 17. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. Uh, David Brown did an awesome job last week covering that one and our faithfulness to each other in God. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony uh, or 
tell lies against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. This is jealousy. Not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, ox or donkey, anything that belongs to your neighbor. So we've got four big do nots listed for us. Murder, adultery, steal, testimony or lies and jealousy or covetousness. And, and so all of this has to do with our relationship with each other. And today I want to just sort of illustrate and point out why this is so important to God. How many of you, uh, and I'm sure this is everyone, how many of you have ever been deeply hurt by something someone said or did to you, and it just stabbed deep? Let's just be honest. Raise your hand if, if somebody's just ever really, really hurt you. Um, it reminds me of my little girl. Uh, Bailey's six now, and you've heard me say she's just in this season of life where she just doesn't like daddy kisses. I don't know. This, I love kissing my baby girl. Uh, I've even shaved. Maybe, maybe that's it. I'm just trying to find what's the secret. Uh, but every day she, I mean every day, multiple times a day, she loves to draw pictures and she will come and bring her picture. Now, now I, I'm down with some, some uh, six-year-old artwork, but after about 32 of them, every day, it's like another kitty cat. Awesome, baby girl. Another one looks just like the first 38. Um, but this, she will say to me, this is how I show love. I draw pictures. And I'll say, well, that's awesome. Do you know how daddy shows love? Daddy likes kisses. She'll say, but this is how I show love. I, I draw pictures. And here's what I've noticed. I have learned no matter what is going on, when Bailey is coming to present that picture, she needs eye contact and she needs your mind to be blown. Because to us, it's just the 5,000th picture of a kitty cat. But to her, this is her heart. And she is offering it as a gift. And, if you, and, and I've just learned my reaction has got to be, this is the greatest photo I have ever seen. You get better every single time. My mind is blown. And she's like, I know. <laughs> But I, it's, it's kind of like that with us in life. And here's what I've learned about people. It doesn't matter who you are, how old, how successful, how rich. Everyone has this desire to be known, to be needed, to be valued, to be wanted, to be loved. And I find this is true. We go through every day of our life and our heart is just crying out, do you see me? Do you love me? Do I have value? Do you want me? And we are so terrible at this with each other because we just, we stab each other. And it's like we take that cat drawing and it's like, yeah, whatever, maybe later. Or I ain't got time for this right now and throw it in the trash. And it leaves us with so many hurts in our heart with each other. Uh, but God's desire for us and God's design for us, the reason he put us in a body is something so much, so beautiful and powerful. His desire is oneness and unity because he puts special things in each of us. And his desire, just like Jesus saying, I am one with the Father. I don't say anything the Father doesn't want me to say. I don't do anything the Father doesn't want me to do. And then Philippians 2, Paul says, make my joy complete, body of Christ, be one in mind, one in purpose, one in spirit, just come together, operate as one body. And so I want to illustrate this today of what it looks like. We're going to do, I need your help in the crowd today, and I've got a couple people helping me. Babe, uh, Michelle, you helping me out there today? Where are y'all at? Back in the back here. I just, I'm going to try something. I used to be really good at this. I, I've got a short-term photographic memory, so I'm going to try a little memory trick, um, but I may screw this up because I'm getting older and haven't done this in a while. But I'm just, I need about 10 of you. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to run this string through the crowd. The string represents the connectivity of God's body, the flow of the Holy Spirit. So we're starting back here. If you would just say your name to everybody and one thing that you are good at, one thing you're gifted at, it can be anything, no wrong answer. I know this happens to be Mr. Bruce Owen. So 
Bruce, tell everybody, what's one thing you are good at? Uh, Bruce Owen, organizing things. Organizing things. Let me lock it in. Let me lock it in. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Bruce, now we're going to go to the next person. We got somebody up here. Who's next? All right. Right down here. Share your name and something you are really good at. Uh, David Hopkins. I'm good at nothing. No, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm good at loving my wife. Loving your wife. Awesome. Stay standing if you don't mind and hold on to the string. We're going to keep it going through the crowd. If you don't mind, stay standing for us there, David. Let's, let's keep that string running through the crowd. Find someone else to go to. Babe, you got somebody? Next one. And David, don't let that string go. You're a part of the body right now. You do see he needs his wife's help, though. You see that? Absolutely. Are y'all registered for date night? I'm just asking. <laughs> Who, who's next on our list? You could be, it could be you. It could be come. Right. Awesome. Miss Rebecca, if you don't mind standing up, share your name and something you are good at. Uh, my name is Rebecca Presley, and I love people. So I'm good at just loving people and visiting them and speaking to them. I just really like people. Miss Rebecca yeah. Press. She loves people, everybody. All right. I got it locked in. I got it locked in. Just a few more. A few more. Who would, if you'll pass that string right down the aisle, Grant's going to help us out here and find our next participant in the body of Christ. It can be anything. Anything at all you're good at. Who we got? Mr. James Fountain here. Go for it. I'm James whoa, Fountain. Whoa, whoa now. <laughs> and I'm good at kissing on my grandbabies. Oh, okay. That could have gone so many ways, brother. Thank you for... <laughs> and the baby's mama. <laughs> Thank you, James. Stay standing. Y'all stay standing. We got, a, we got a growing body of Christ right here. Who's next? Oh, yeah. Call him out. J-Lo. And um, I'm good at figuring out puzzles. Figuring out puzzle. Oh, I gotta lock. I gotta lock this one in. Gotta lock. Okay, J Lo. That's not short for Jennifer Lopez, right? That's J Lo. All right, good. <laughs> right down here. Who's next? Brian Lewis and I. Here I'm good at controlling the remote. <laughs> nice. Nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stay standing and hold on to the string, Brian Lewis. Uh, let's get a couple more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do two more. Hand it to him. You got to do it. You got called out in front of everybody. Is that Charlie back there? Charlie. Oh. Oh, my name is Charlie Thornton. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Eating burgers. Eating burgers. <laughs> Don't let them do that to you, Charlie. You are part of my stream. Ron Yerlakovitz, and uh, I'm good at repairing things. I'm a handy guy. Awesome, awesome. Hey, let's do one more. Let's make it all the way to the back there. Ron, handyman. All the way back. Tammy Dickens, and I'm good at taking care of my family. 
Taking care of your family. I'll stay standing. All right, look around, everybody. This represents how God loves to join us together as a body, as a family. Now, uh, I, I haven't done this in a while. I'm see if I can lock it in. We've got Mr. Bruce Owen back there who is gifted and great at organizing things. We've got Mr. David Hawkins right here who is great at loving his wife. Rebecca Presley who is so good at loving people, visiting people, caring for people. She loves people. We've got James Fountain here who is good at kissing his grandbaby and the baby mama and we got J. Lo, Jennifer Lopez right here is good at putting puzzles together. We got Brian Lewis who loves controlling that remote. Charlie Thornton who's great at eating them burgers and Mr. Ron Yulakovitz, who is a handyman. And then finally, Tammy back there, you are great at loving your family. How about that? We got them all. Now. Yep. Stay standing just for one minute. Babe, do you happen to have a knife or scissors or anything on you? Hmm, that's interesting. Anybody got a pocket knife out there I could I'm sure borrow? I'm we can find one. Handyman. We got one. Ron, Ron, handyman. I'm going to borrow that from you. Now, here's the way the body of Christ flows. He flows through the Holy Spirit. Now, if you don't, if you don't, you may not ever recognize this or sense this. Um, just, Ron, you just made the people around you a little nervous today, brother. Uh, <laughs> Now, when Jesus was uh, touched by the woman who made her way through the crowd, Jesus paused and said, I just felt virtue leave me. When we minister to each other, there's actually a transfer of power of the Holy Spirit. And so God's desire and design is to connect everyone in the world through his Holy Spirit, through love for each other. And so when we do that, God says uh, he actually places gifts. None of us have all of them, but he places gifts in each one of us for the benefit of the rest of the body. And so God's desire is for the whole world to come together connected by his Holy Spirit. And then when that happens, Bruce, you may be a few people away from Miss Rebecca here. But as that flow of the Holy Spirit goes back and forth, Bruce, you'll actually benefit from Rebecca's gift to love on people and minister to her. Even though she's a couple people removed. And then David Hopkins, your love. You're going to be able to mentor people on how to love. And so Bruce is going to benefit from that. And then Rebecca's going to benefit, benefit from that. And then we're going to come across a puzzle one day that we can't figure out. And then, hey, J-Lo is part of our family. And so I'm calling you J-Lo like it's, you get that a lot. <laughs> Jay is going to, we're going to, hey, we got Jay in our body. Let's call on him. And it, you see, as the body of Christ expands, we get stronger. We get more powerful. We get more Christ-like. It's like when two people come together in marriage, the gifts that are in each of you come together, and it's a fuller picture of Christ because each of you brings something to the table. Now, if we as the church would operate as one body, imagine how powerful we would be. Imagine the difference we can make in this world. But what we do is James gets upset with Jay, and he says, that's it, brother. I've heard it enough. I am tired to you and then there's brokenness and there's bitterness and there's unforgiveness and now everyone over here ceases to benefit from all the gifts and blessings over here and then this person's carrying around bitterness and anger and he's probably going to give it right back to Rebecca and then that's relationship's going to be severed and then it's it's like spiritual cancer that just gets a hold of bodies and families split apart and churches split up and we have a problem of stabbing each other and cutting off these relationships and so today I want to just give you a couple little things from scripture thank you everybody for helping out in this illustration y'all can gather that string thank you Rebecca I like your knife there, Ron, huh? Thank you, brother. Now, I'll get it to you. I will get it to you. How many of you, and, and be honest, and I recognize this could be a little painful, how many of you have experienced a severed relationship because it just got so toxic between you? Anybody want to raise your hand? This is probably most of us as well. 
because we're not so great at this right here because when we are hurt and offended, and we all are, we tend to build up anger and forgiveness, unforgiveness and bitterness. Now, I want to help you before I kind of share my, my big point for the day. I want to help you to recognize <clears throat> what sin you might be carrying around, how you might be stabbing others. Because I've learned sometimes we just, these sins become strongholds and they become so intertwined with our identity that we stop recognizing what a big problem we have with it. And we're going around stabbing people and severing relationships and we don't even realize we're the cause of it. So I wanna give you two questions to ask yourself to maybe reveal some of the sin strongholds in your life. Just, it, this isn't, a, this is just for you to give to God. Two questions to ask yourself. Number one, whom do I like? Who are the kind of people that you just love to be around? Who are your best friends? Why do I bring this up? Because the Bible says just in many, many places, I'll give you one scripture example. When you walk with the wise, you become wise, but a companion of fools suffers harms. In other words, you become like the people that you hang around. And I have found, maybe you've noticed this, that like spirits attract each other. I've seen this for years at youth ministry camps. If you have a camp of a thousand teenagers and only two of them from totally different cities are into goth. They're like the gothic. Before the weekend's out, they're going to find each other. Uh, like spirit sort of attract each other. So you ask yourself, what kind of people do I run with? And are they gossipers? You probably are too. Are they just always complaining? You probably do too. So just evaluate your circle who are you married to? Like spirits tend to attract each other. Now, the other question, kind of interesting. Whom do you dislike? Who just rubs you wrong? Because that may also reveal something to you. A pastor or uh, an author named Dr. Osterhaus or some years ago wrote a book called Surviving Ministry Conflict. Uh, by learning a little bit more about yourself. Uh, he called them your red and blue zones. And, and one of his principles was based off of the scripture uh, when Jesus was, was told, uh, gave this principle away in the Sermon on the Mount. And he says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Now, what he suggested is that God, Jesus may be revealing to us is the things that irritate you in someone else might be irritating you because it's just a reflection of what you don't like about yourself. And so there, if somebody shares a sin that you hate about yourself, anytime you're around that person and see that, it is a reminder of something in you and you just want to give it to them. You just, you're just so, you're so rude all the time. Uh, have you noticed how rude you are? Like, it, what it, think about the specs that just drive you crazy. It might be revealing a, a plank. It might be revealing a board in yours. Because, you know, if I don't have a problem with uh, lying, liars don't bother me. I'm just like, such a liar. But put me in a room with someone that shares something I don't like about myself. Man, what is it about that person? I can't stand that person. Well, it's because you see yourself in that person. You see the things you wish you could change. So ask yourself those two things. Who do, I, who do I run with and who just drives me crazy? That might reveal something about you. But now how can we tie the strings? How can we bring reconciliation in the body of Christ? Simple but not easy. Every time relationships must be healed. There always, there's one essential ingredient. There's no way around it. This has to be part of the cure is always forgiveness. And next month, we're going to do a series on some of the Old Testament feasts. We're just going to have fun with that and see how every 
they all just point to Jesus, point to Jesus, point to Jesus. And then it's going to culminate on Easter. And uh, some, probably on Easter Sunday, I'm going to dive a little bit more into this. But the, the thing about forgiveness is you can't do this. You can't forgive because forgiveness costs something. And it costs a price you can't afford. Forgiveness requires... Forgiveness is not free. It's free to us, but it's not free. And so the only way to give away forgiveness is to receive it from Christ who paid for forgiveness. Like You just can't be a forgiving person. You can try to ignore something. You can say, well, I'm just not going to think about it. Forgiveness actually costs a lot. And the only way it's possible for us to truly forgive is to receive it from the one that paid for this thing called forgiveness. And so we must apply this thing, forgiveness, with each other. We must every day walk in forgiveness with each other. Um, And it is not easy. Because when you give that drawing of your, that little kitty cat drawing that you're giving your heart away and then someone comes along and just says that it's so worthless it's so ugly they they just stab the most precious thing to you and I've had times in ministry where I just I'll spend weeks months in preparation and prayer for a message and I just like God I'm so burdened with this and and, and I, on Sunday morning, this is my offering each week to God. God, I just give you, I give you my best today. And some of the comments through the years, which, oh. It reminds me of Dr. Cho, the pastor in China who leads the largest church in the world. Uh, he's been known for saying every day, I pray to forgive people. Because every day, I hate so many people. Every day, this broken, unfair, brutal world is going to throw knives at you. They're going to stab your heart, and they're going to stab the most precious part of you. And the devil may be currently winning in a lot of places where he's just picking apart relationships and churches and families. And he just, let's just insert bitterness, insert unforgiveness, insert these hurts, and watch the body tear apart. Only through forgiveness can we see healing and reconciliation. And I just want to leave you with one passage that in one statement, Jesus covers so much for how we can do this. There's three big parts to this process. When when someone stabs you, and honestly, it may be me. It's going to be your spouse at times. It's going to be your best friend. It's going to be your neighbors. It is going to be someone. Maybe every day, someone's going to stab you. In that moment, you have a decision. Will I apply the forgiveness of Christ, or will I allow this bitterness to take root in my heart? And God says, don't even let the sun go down. On your anger because the devil will get a stronghold in your life and so in that moment you pray for them and I mean not pray for them to get what's coming to them but I mean pray for them God I don't know the hurt in their life I don't know what the motivation I don't know what's going on father I pray for them I pray for them and then bless them find a way to just speak Not bless them out like you want to do. Bless them. You know what? I just want to encourage you today. Watch. watch, Just try it. Just try it this week. Watch what happens when someone who throws that dart, who normally you would lash back out at, stop and pray and then bless them. Find a way to bless them. And then if you want to get real crazy, serve them. Do something that blows their mind. Just try this one. Will you try it one week, one week of your life, and see if you don't come back next week and say, it's amazing. 
people were so much nicer to me this week. No, the thing that changed, it was us. Jesus said this. He said, to anyone who's listening, that's what I said, anyone who's listening today, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Try it, church, and see what happens. He goes on to say, if someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to the other also. If someone takes your coat, oh, you're cold here. Take my shirt too. It's real chilly out there. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, don't demand it back. Just do the others the way you'd have them do to you and see what happens. And I find it interesting that as Jesus was walking to the cross, in the final moments of his life, after giving himself away to thousands and thousands, never Never showing malice, never showing anger, healing the sick, healing the deaf and the blind, heal, raising the dead, preaching good news, years and years of dying to himself, giving his life away, the most perfect, amazing God on earth in his final hours. Every one of these Ten Commandments those sins were thrown at him. Every single one, just in his final hours, they were thrown at him. They used his name in vain and mockery. Come on, king of the Jews. They refused to submit to him. They refused to honor him. They were adulterous to him. His best friends were unfaithful. Right when he needed them most, says they scattered and left him hanging. They were jealous of him. They were jealous of his following, jealous of his teachings. They blasphemed him. They lied about him. They gave false testimony on him to have him arrested in a false trial in the middle of the night. Every single one of these and finally even murdered him. And after all he did for us, in his final moments, it's like the devil said, that's it. I'm going to take every sin there is and throw at you. And Jesus said, forgive these people. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know. God, forgive them. And Jesus pointed out in his life to the woman who wept at his feet, and the disciples said, get her out of here. She's just a distraction. That's just a little kitty cat drawing that has no worth to us. Get her out of here. Jesus says, this is the, all she's got. This is the greatest gift she has. She's giving her heart. And be reminded, those who are forgiven much, they are the ones who love much. And I want to tell you, hurt people. Go around hurting people. But forgiven people, when you grab hold of this, when you really grab hold of how you've been forgiven, the price of forgiveness, forgiven people, they forgive people. May we be people who forgive freely. I want to pray for you. Jesus, convict our hearts now. Father, forgive me of how I let so many people down every day and every week of my life. Before I even think about forgiving others, God, I ask you to forgive me. I have so much that I need to be forgiven for. I've said things I shouldn't say. I've done things I shouldn't have done. I've not said things I should have said, and I've not done things I should have done. So God, I pray you reveal to our hearts today just how dark 
we really are. How far we fall short, God. In this room, we all need your forgiveness. And today we receive you. And I just hope that it will penetrate our hearts so deep that it will make us forgiving people. When those knives come, that we would pray for those who hurt us. We would bless and not curse. We would serve them and love them. Why? Because you do that for us every day of our lives. If you've never been in relationship with Jesus, if you've never received his gift of forgiveness, I want to offer it to you today because it's already been paid for. It's been paid in full. All you have to do today is number one, recognize how badly you need it. And number two, say yes to his offer. I want to lead you in a prayer. In fact, let's just all pray this together because we have all fallen short. We all need it today. Let's just all pray it together in the hopes that God will heal our hearts so that we can then give it away to others. Let's pray this together, church. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for your death, for your gift that I can't afford but I need it I say yes to you today forgive me of everything redeem my past make me a new person take over my life I'm yours God Fill my life with your love. Make me loving like you. Make me forgiving like you. Make me merciful like you. Use me to restore relationships in this world. Thank you, God, for a fresh beginning today. I love you. In Jesus' name.